Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, is Stephen A. Smith the biggest prisoner of the moment in sports? So that's the topic I'm going to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, we have our Dreamers Pro Max um, online platform, which is an online sports community. It's a place where you can go and start basketball discussions and debates, chat live during games, consume original content that you're you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. Go live with us after games to stream live with us to so we can analyze games together, so we can take your questions and do so many other things. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to check it out in the description below and get seven days of free access. Now that you see the season is ramping up again and the playoffs are, start, are going to be around the corner soon, you don't want to miss out on that. So make sure you check that out. That's in the description below. So let me get into this video here. So y'all know that Stephen A. Smith is probably the biggest sports analyst in the world, right? He's on ESPN, which is for sure the biggest sports media company in the world. I, I don't even think um, there's another company second, probably Fox Sports or Sky uh, Sports, but certainly, um, you know, ESPN is huge. And he has the biggest show on that network in ESPN First Take. First Take is the biggest show on that network, and he's the biggest personality for sure. He's the face of that network. So that's why I'm saying he's the biggest sports analyst um, in, in sports, in my opinion, and probably you have uh, Skip Bayless. Uh, coming in at a close second, although Skip Bayless was the one that recruited Stephen A. Smith on that show, the show that was originally called Cold, Cold Pizza, which Stephen, uh, uh, Skip Bayless started. So we all know Stephen A. Smith. He's very entertaining. He's a very entertaining guy. Talks loud. You know, you got 30 and 50. And then, you know, Stephen A. Smith, He's uh, that's how he speaks. And, and, and I understand that to a certain degree, you have to entertain people because you're on TV. You have to be animated. If you're just there kind of going through the motions, you're not going to be able to entertain people. There are very few people that can be kind of monotone and just very subdued and reserved and work well on TV. On TV, you have to entertain people. And I think Stephen A. Smith does a good job of that. Obviously, he's very hardworking. He has multiple shows on the network, something he talks about. He's like, I'm doing hosting three shows or whatever it is. And he's very successful. You know, Stephen A. Smith is earning somewhere around eight to ten million dollars a year uh, according to some of the reports i think it's somewhere around eight million dollars a year um you know with the contract that he negotiated with the network so you know kudos to him uh you know the guy's very successful so uh, you know kudos to him anyway y'all know this sometimes uh though however i do disagree with stephen a smith from time to time given the fact he's still very good i do disagree with him i don't like the fact that he's always coming he always seems to have some type of issue with Kawhi leonard to me, I thought it was a bit personal. Um, I, I feel like he puts this pressure on Kawhi, and there's nothing wrong with push, putting pressure on Kawhi Leonard. I understand that. But at the same time, he puts this pressure on Kawhi Leonard while overlooking so many other guys that haven't accomplished half of what Kawhi Leonard's accomplished and just kind of gives those guys a pass. Like I said, oh, they, they've been there. They've done that. The James Hardens of the world and these other guys. Meanwhile, Kawhi's a two-time NBA champion, two-time finals MVP, multiple defensive player of the year, multiple-time all-star. But he acts like as if this guy still has something to prove. Not that he, not that his, you know, not that his story's finished. Not that Kawhi Leonard can't continue to win. Because in that sense, I think he, he needs to continue to enhance his, his resume. That I have no, no, no doubt about. But when he kind of singles him out and omits other guys that's the part where I'm like, okay, I don't understand what this is all about. There are other guys in the NBA that have not accomplished as much as Kawhi Leonard has accomplished in the playoffs and in the finals, but yet I don't see him, you know, holding their feet to the fire and bringing them to the carpet, you know, to question them. So that's the only part where me and him, I just, I'm like, I'm like, what is going on here? Like, what is really going on? I don't understand what your gripe is, uh, you know, what your beef is uh, with this guy. Now, let me get into the part where I talk about him being the biggest prisoner of the moment in sports. Okay. We can go back two years ago. Y'all remember when the Milwaukee Bucks were playing against the Toronto Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals. Do y'all remember what happened? In that first game, I think the Milwaukee Bucks put a beat down or they beat the Toronto Raptors. And Stephen A. Smith, who usually at that time goes to playoff games uh, to, to analyze playoff games, he said... He thinks that the, Tor the Toronto Raptors don't have a chance, that it's over, that, you know, it, it, the series is not going to last long. And then when the Milwaukee Bucks won the second game, he said the series was over. After two games, he declared the series a wrap. Finito. It's finished. It's done. It's done. It's a wrap. Fin. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. He said the series was over, and then obviously we remember what happened. They ended up, uh, they ended up coming back and ultimately beating the team. Uh, four games in a row 
and then and then and then ultimately, um, you know, uh, they ended up winning the finals. This season, Stephen A. Smith has literally thrown out almost everyone's name for regular season MVP. Right? He was saying so many different people's names to the point where, like, a week or two ago or three weeks ago, he all of a sudden was saying James Harden should be the MVP, and I'm like. What? Now all of a sudden James Harden is being catapulted into the MVP discussion. Then I said, okay. So I think his top candidates were James Harden, LeBron James, and Joel Embiid. Although he just said about three days ago or so that Joel Embiid is going to win the, the regular season MVP. But Joel Embiid, as you all know, or some of you guys who don't know, recently got injured in the game. I think his, his knee or something. I had to get an MRI in his knee because he landed uh, awkwardly. I didn't see the injury, but that's what I read. On, on my notifications when I when I heard about the news. Then, just on Friday, just this Friday, Stephen A. Smith now declared after the game that the uh, the Brooklyn Nets, I forgot the team that they played, I th the Boston Celtics, and Kyrie Irving went for 40 points. Guess what he said? He said now that he believes that Kyrie Irving now should be in the MVP race. So before I go too far, I want you guys to take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say about why he believes that Kyrie Irving should be in the MVP race. We've been talking about MB. We've been talking about James Harden. We've been talking about He's LeBron James. Kyrie Irving has to be on the league MVP list. The brother's the showstopper. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just call it what it is. The brother is a showstopper. I can't, I, I can't take it away from him. I think that Kyrie Irving right now is the greatest show in the NBA. I'm talking about if, if fans had an opportunity at this moment in time to walk through the turnstiles, Kyrie Irving should be the number one attraction in the NBA as we speak. Now, we're going to get aside. We're going to shove aside the fact that the Brooklyn Nets have been winning games. Without KD, you could actually make a reverse argument. Instead of KD being the MVP early in the season when he was averaging 30 and healthy, hell, he should be the MVP again because they win it without him. Okay? I mean, I mean, damn. That what you're seeing from Brooklyn right now is what you're seeing. I told you that was going to happen. But when I think about Kyrie Irving and what he is doing right now, averaging 27.7, 5.9 assists, all right, 4.9 rebounds, shoot 51% from the field, 42% from three-point range, 89.2% from the free throw line, the nastiest handle in basketball, as you would say, the greatest finisher for a small man at the basket, maybe in NBA history, and you just look at everything he does, man. The brother do a spin move. It's a fall, it's just a fall away jumper, but everything just looks pretty. Remember when Michael Jordan was in a dunk contest against Dominique in 88, and he just went and sprinted and, and, and just flew through the air, Air Jordan, and you just sort of dunk, you're like, all right, that looks nice, until they slow and then you see him cock back and kick the legs, and you're like, damn, it looks a lot pretty. Dr. J 2.0. Yeah. You know what? You don't have to slow it down for Kyrie. You just see Kyrie do certain things, and it's like, damn. And I'm just saying, with Brooklyn winning, with KD being out, with him putting on the show after show after show. Remember, I'm the dude that said the man should retire. If you don't want to play basketball, you say you want to take a sabbatical, you want to take a hiatus, damn it, retire until you're ready to come back and play basketball. Well, damn it, he came back ready to play. Apparently, that hiatus has done something for him. Kyrie Irving needs to be on the list for league MVP honors because the brother is doing it. They're winning, and he is a flat-out show stopper. The greatest show. So in that audio... You hear Stephen A. Smith saying, Kyrie's the best show on, you know, the best show in the basketball, and he's amazing, and da 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 So now he has to be in the MVP rate. And I'm like, hold up. So how many people are going to win the MVP? Is it going to be like five people winning the MVP? You just had James Harden. Now all of a sudden you have Kyrie. But hold up. Wait a minute. Wasn't this the same Stephen A. Smith that said Kyrie Irving, after going incognito and missing games, wasn't he the same guy that said Kyrie Irving should retire? Stephen A. Smith said early in the season that he thinks Kyrie should retire because he wasn't even showing up to games and he was a detriment, detriment to his team. And now all of a sudden, because he dropped 40 points, he should be catapulted into the MVP discussion. What? Am I missing something? Like, so what is this? So what is your what is your criteria? What's your criteria for winning MVP? And to me, I think it's just another example of Stephen A. Smith 
being a prisoner at the moment makes no sense. All of a sudden now Kyrie Irving should be regular season MVP. It makes no sense to me. So what I want to know from you guys is do you think Stephen A. Smith is the biggest prisoner at the moment? Uh, in sports or do you think it's somebody else or do you think i'm wrong whatever you guys think please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below again if you enjoyed the video be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content once again this is charles here from dreamers pro wishing you guys an amazing day catch you guys on the next episode peace